Hey, it's Dave from Bullpen Cycles. And, well, when I bought this, this 1980 Moto Marini 500, you saw me buy it. It was in mid-Ohio. I thought it was just a Moto Marini 500 Strata, nothing special. That's some full painted peppermint green. But you know, that's not peppermint. That's a modium anti diarrhea green. So now that I pinpointed the color, I learned so much more. In fact, my friend describes this bike as the fastest Moto Morini that he's ever ridden. And he's ridden quite a few. So let's find out. But first, let's do a little history. Moto Morini was started I don't know when, by, I think it was Alfonso Morini, not to be confused with Franco Morini. Franco made the little motors, Almon Alfonso made the motorcycles. And initially they were imported to America through a distributor in Providence, Rhode Island. But mm, sometime in the 70s, an outfit called Hermes, Herdan Enterprises it was, became the exclusive distributor importer for Moto Marini in North America. And that was probably in the early 70s. And my friend, Don West, partnered with Hermie and became one of the earliest Moto Marini franchisees. In fact, I still have that shop's shirt. And I'm not trying to sell these. That's not what we're doing. I just want to show you. Cycle Shack. Moto Marini Boltaco. This was the shop that I bought out. We became lifelong friends. And without Don West, there'd be no, no bullpen cycles. But anyway, back to the 1970s. Don and Hermie, back then it was Big Herm and Little Herm, because there were only two. Now there are three. So it's Herm Senior, Herm Junior, and Little Herm. Junior and Little are at Hermes BMW Triumph dealer. Senior, he's still with us. He's at Herdan Enterprises, and he's a distributor for Delordo, Tomaselli, and oh, I guess. Franco Morini or Minarelli if they're still getting parts. All the things that end in a vowel. Herdan Enterprises. Anyway, they were trying to make the brand. This is early. This is from a three and a half. This is from the bike that they ran the 24 hour endurance race in. It might have been Sebring. I'll share a photo. I understand the first year they didn't finish, but the second year they got it. And they were doing a lot of the work for the company, Moto Marini, as it got big here in America. In fact, this 500, as I understand it, was not developed originally in Italy. But Westy and Hermie got together and they were racing Moto Marini. I have pictures. They built the first, this is the story. I don't know if it rings true, but they built the first Moto Marini 500 motorcycle by taking two, by taking two 250cc jugs and mating them to a three and a half. And this is a picture from 1977. This is Rich. I think you pronounce it Rogi. This is at Timonium. That's an indoor track. He's on that bike. 
And here he is again, Rich Rogie and the late Jim Sutter. Jim was a good racer. He's not with us anymore either. This is 78. Another shot of Rich in 79. And this is Joey Sersolo. I You know the Sersolo's over at the bull ring. I think that's his, it's his son or his grandson. Anyway, that's on what is believed to be the first Moto Marini 500, which gave birth to the Moto Marini 500 produced by the factory. Now I understand there's two versions of this bike, but I think that's a rumor. I think what they did is they took the flat tracker and they made it a road racer and they raced, I don't know, they probably raced Daytona and some other races with it, probably in the amateur division. And that bike is still owned by Herm Sr. of Herdan Enterprises. But back to this 500. Here's what I also didn't know, and I have to show you some more history. The 500, when it first birthed, was not a 500 at all. They called it a 500, but it wasn't a 500. The original 500 was actually, the first 500 was actually 478 cc's so let's see if that works out the 250 was actually 239 cc's the 500 was a five speed but the three and a half was a six speed and i'm guessing on the three and a half you probably needed that extra gear the three and a half was never my favorite bike I always thought it was slow and clunky, and that's probably because I was driving it wrong. You're supposed to flog them. The 500 was more to my liking. They came out with something called 500 Say. Now the 500 Say was a six speed, but it was still only for 478 cc's. And then later you got a kangaroo, which was a little three and a half dual sport adventure bike, if you will. And then you had the camel, which initially the camel was also not a 500. It was a 478 CC motorcycle. The 500, the real true 500 didn't come out until the camel 501 or the Excalibur 501. And I don't know why they call that 501. I guess because it's Italian, they have to trick you because that's actually 507 cc's. This bike has, I think it's an Excalibur motor. It's a six speed 507 cc engine and the regular 478 cc package. I think it started as a strata here's the first camel 500 which is 478 the three and a half kangaroo which is 344 the three and a half sport which is also 344 And it's a six speed. Here's the 501 Camel. And this is a rare bike, I think on both sides of the pond. And this was 507 cc's with a six speed transmission. Along with the Excalibur. Now here I didn't know the Excalibur was made in both a 350 and a 501 that i didn't know so up until now i thought that all 500s were the same but they're not
But wait, there's more. Where did this bike come from? Who built it? And that is the Paul Harvey rest of the story. This bike came from the Fred Heaston estate. Fred Heaston was a Moto Marini dealer. I think also Moto Guzzi. I think he worked on Fiat, anything Italian. And he was out, I don't know, Middletown, Effort, or somewhere around there. And he passed away in 2004. And his estate sale, here it says, located in Perry County. Gravel Hill Road, Newport, PA. And that's where this bike was sold. And I had trouble setting this bike up because I didn't know that it had the larger motor. I put stock jets in the carburetor and I couldn't get it to idle. I actually had to take it to Hermes. It was only later that I learned why I couldn't jet it with standard jets. It's because it's a bigger motor and there's probably performance mods done that I am not aware of. But that's where this bike gets its name as the fastest Moto Marini I have ever ridden. Well, at least according to my friend. But let's find out. Now, all I have to show you, these things have something weird. It was probably federally mandated. Stupid electric petcocks. And of course, that one doesn't work. They fail and people take them out. I'm thinking the government mandated that probably the same time the Japanese went to the vacuum assisted ones so you get a positive off when the bike was not running. Leave it to the government to screw things up. So, but we do have a reserve and of course, huh, I left it on. Figures, choke, key, key in a dumb spot. It should light right up. I get my helmet on we'll see if I can do that twice before we go for a ride let's lay some eyeballs on this thing so now that the say the Moto Marini say would have had lowers which I have in matching KO pectate green the owner before me put the belly pan fairing on it You'd either run the lowers or the belly pan. I used to know whose wheels they were. You can see why I was fooled. I thought that this was a stock bike. What I don't know, and one of you Moto Marini experts can tell me, I believe this was a Strata. Did the Strata ever come with dual discs? Or did he have to change a fork lower and the brake lines to mount the dual disc Gramicas? Looking at an engine number, of course it's upside down. There's no S by the frame number. Let's see if I can even find an engine number. Here we go. 03672. So you Moto Marini tell, tell me if that means anything. And the frame says 500W. So I'm assuming this is a Strata, not a Sport. Of course, the 
needle in the speedometer is warped. It works, but it's warped. They're like that. I'm not sure if the electronic tack works. They're known to fail. I did go through the brakes. Now we can ride. What we're trying to do here is build a Moto Marini Say, which give you the six speed transmission, but mount it to the biggest motor so you can get the most performance out of it using factory Moto Marini parts. That's what I think they were trying to do. And I believe they accomplished that. Stupid spot for a key. The reserve petcock is on. Don't know if I need choke, I'll use it. I'm guessing it's one down, I don't remember. Oh, that clutch is a little bit hard. Oh yeah, think of it, it's a dry clutch too. Listen to it squeal. I forgot to mention that. Italian exotic. Now I am not gonna tell you what speed we're going. Who the heck knows? I'm getting some kind of muted response out of the tack, not much. Wow, this thing does it's so much more bike than the three and a half. Horribly dry rotted tires. I've got to order some. Well, you can see the front brakes are grabbing good. You can still get seal kits for the brake calipers. Now, I don't know about master cylinder kits. I think you can still get them from Herdan. They make repop seal kits for the calipers. The Gramica, which was the name in brakes at the time. Boy, compare this to that BMW 500. This thing goes. Just revs faster. Of course, we can't tell. Alright, I got a little bit of hesitation there on acceleration. I wonder if my mains need to be larger. We up the pilot jets by two sizes. The mains are still stock. We could look what they take in a 501. I got a little bit of hesitation there. I'm going smooth now, not hitting it wide open, just to see how it feels. And it feels good. It sounds good. I have no idea what gear I'm in. And I have no idea how fast I'm going either. <laughs> it's a smooth bike. I don't feel anything here. My tires are crap. Back brakes are working good. Let's see if it idles. Yeah, look at that. 
Might even be able to drop it down a tad. All right, let's hit it. Two. Little bit of eh, eh, eh right there. There too. Right at the mid range. I don't know what gear that is. Five? Six? Doesn't really like six. It's like an overdrive. Don't go, don't go. Thank you. Wow, it was Michael Jackson. Wonder if I can turn around here. Beep beep. Does my horn work? I don't even know where it is. It says horn flash. What is that? Horn? Okay. Turns. Yep. I love that it pulls hard from low. For a 500, that's a pretty good. The three and a half would never do that. I gotta go some more. You know, it's liking that I run it. it seems to be running it better now. Wonder when it was last run. Nobody behind me, that's good. Leave it this color, color of Imodium AD, or should I paint it like a Moto Marini say, black and red? Cast your vote.
in the comments. Actually, there's a case for leaving it this color. Those of you who knew Fred might want to leave it this color. Or not. Let me know.